Hello out there. James here. I'm live. I'll wait for people to jump on board. It's Wednesday night. Another beautiful day. Very windy in my neck of the woods. I don't know how it is for you guys. There's one heart. That means somebody's here. Hello, Brianna. Nice to have you here. Uh, so tonight we're going to paint. Well, I'm going to paint, but anyone's uh, welcome to join in. If you have a rock, if you have some paint and you have some, well, you don't need much creativity. Uh, we all love owls, right? And many of you know me for my owls, my rock painting, the little rock owls I do. And I thought that this would be a fun thing to do, kind of share some of my secrets. Uh, oh, wow, there's a lot of you out there. So everybody's going to know now what I do. So I guess I don't need to paint them anymore. Uh, but what I thought I would do, uh, this session will go a little longer, I think, because I would like to try to create a rock, uh, paint a whole rock out from start to finish, or pretty close to it, and uh, and then see, you know, it may take longer than the usual. So you guys can jump in or out. I'll be here. I enjoy what I do. I love having you here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, I'll do the same thing uh, after I paint. I'll come back for a few uh, little Q&A. Uh, for those of you who want to stick around and ask me anything, uh, you can ask me, you know, you know, any kind of questions that you might have. So, uh, so here is, this is the owl I'm going to paint here. I'm going to try to fix the, let me fix the camera here. And you guys have to help me out here because I'm still playing around with like focusing in. I'm not sure if we can focus with the live feed. So. I'm going to try to do it, uh, you know, with, with the owl so we can see it a little closer as I'm painting it. Uh, if it doesn't work, I was able to do it like without it being live, but I'm not sure if that's an option. So we'll do that little test. Let me know if the lighting's okay, the sound and everything. Uh, this is, again, I'm just kind of playing around here. I'm not a professional in any of the sense. So, uh, so let's have at it. Uh, so basically these these uh owls they just start with a rock so as you can see i've just catched a rock here here's a another rock and these i just found find down by the river and uh just you know they're usually really dirty so i'll just see the shape bring them home a big bucket and then i'll just like clean them off and and then all of a sudden i know that you know it has the potential to be a little like a little a little owl so uh that's one of the nicest things about finding your own rock is they have so much each rock has its own characteristics some are more porous than others some are a little bit more smooth and some have near really neat shapes uh this one's got a really a great place for my thumb so that's the one i'm going to paint so I, I took to him right away. Maybe, you know, you guys can come up with a name for him after I'm done. So, uh, so this is what I'm going to paint. Uh, what I do is it starts with just the regular rock with nothing on it, obviously. And I just kind of look at the shape and I kind of see what I can, you know, where I could see the face. Usually it's the rounder part and I kind of, the round of the back looks better for like the wings and the flatter part for the front. So, and then I just use, uh, a lot of times it's just a brown Sharpie. Uh, again, these are the Copic markers. Again, I'm backwards, so I'm not left-handed, but I'm left-handed live. So I'd like to, you know, change it up a little bit for you guys. So still haven't figured that whole thing out yet, uh, being live in backwards or a mirror image. So, uh, but this is my chance to be a lefty. So, uh... So what I do is I just draw, draw it with marker. So just to have, just the gauge. Now it's going to change because I work with acrylics. So uh, acrylics, obviously watercolors wouldn't work. Obviously watercolors my a, a great medium that I use with the uh, with the painting. 
uh, but acrylics work best, I find, for the stone. So uh, I also, and if you remember last week, I gave my little secret away with, uh, with the gesso, uh, which is an acrylic, uh, kind of acrylic primer that people, artists use for priming their canvases, and it's got a lot of pigment in it. I'm using the same trick uh, for, for doing the owls. So uh, a lot of times what I do is I'll just start with the white right on top, and I kind of work from light to dark and then go back and clean up with details and stuff. So enough of seeing my face, I'm going to point it, I'm going to try to zoom in and I'm going to just start painting this little, this little owl. And you guys can ask questions, follow along, uh, try to paint yourself. And then I'll come back for some Q and A. I'll talk while I'm doing it. Uh, but just, just enjoy. Uh, as I enjoy sharing it, and uh, maybe you guys can, this might be a nice little uh, little thing you can pick up and do, especially since we're all at home, it gives us, you know, gives you something to do. So at least we're still allowed to go out and hike in the woods and all, and you can find rocks and all. So, uh, and happy Earth Day. This is a big day, so another reason to get outside. So, uh, okay, so here I go. So just give me a moment to, uh, like, focus in. Hopefully it works. Okay, I'm still with you. All right. So I'm going to kind of angle it down. And you guys, I can still see your comments, but there's so many of them, I just can't read them as quick. I'm an artist, so I'm kind of a, uh, you know, we all have gifts, right? I'm a slow reader. That's another thing about me. Uh, that's why I love, I love to read, but I love to listen to auto audiobooks. So a lot of times I'll, I'll just play stories while I'm painting. So, okay, so that's the palette. Uh, a lot of times, now I'm gonna try to focus feature, so bear with me. Oh, does that, is that focusing in for you guys? Okay, I'll just wait for some, there's so many people talking at the same time, that's cool. Okay, so hopefully that, We'll bring, bring the uh, the focus in on the owl while I'm painting, and you can see the little brush strokes. And again, I'm sorry if things are out of focus. I'm still kind of working on some things. So, okay. Yo, yeah, oh, good. I got some yeses. So it's clear? Okay. So, and again, usually I play music, uh, but I'm not going to do that while you're here. Maybe as we uh, move along with these, you guys get used to being in the studio. Uh, but I thought maybe it might be a little distracting. Uh, so I'll just, uh, I'll just talk while I'm painting. So everything looks good. Okay. Wow. So many of you. Okay. So, okay. So it's just uh, acrylic. It's water-based. So I'm only using, uh, there's no mediums or anything like that. Let me see if I can pull my palette down a little bit. Uh, it's just water. Uh, right here. Oh, and if any of you want to uh, not see the comments, you can always just, uh, I think you push it over to the left or the right. I'm not sure if you want to get the full screen. But you can also see uh, what everybody's writing too. So, okay, so what I do, I'm going to start with just the gesso. And all I'm doing here is making a small puddle with water and the gesso. And it's important just to leave a little area where you can do a little mixing. So I just have a little open cup here. Okay. And you just kind of get it down to like uh, water it down enough where, so it's kind of going on transparent. So it's not going on thick right away. It's really important to work with the rock uh, because again, uh, the rocks have different veins in them. They have marbleizing, they have color. Uh, so work with the rock. Every rock has a different, uh, a different character. So, uh, so I'm going to kind of build it up, uh, transparently and then build up and get it more opaque as I work up. So I have my ink lines, the Sharpie's nice because it, the lines just don't disappear, you know, they stay and eventually they'll all get painted over. So here I go. Sorry for my shaking. I just had a cup of coffee. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So if I'm uh, shaking a little bit, so bear with me. Okay. 
I'm going to stop looking at the camera because everything's backwards. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm lightly washing in the gesso, just white. It's just, gesso is just white. Now you can get gesso also, you can get it in black. Uh, you can get it in gray. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's just, it's meant for priming and, and priming canvases and everything, getting bases down on, uh, like kind of an underpainting uh, layer before you paint. Uh, but I, again, I find that it's just a great, it's just a great medium to use. It works really well with the watercolor and it works really well on the rocks. I have tried just regular white acrylic and it just doesn't seem to work as nice on the rock. So there's something really magical about the gesso. Uh, when I post this video, I'll post the uh, materials that I used and uh, you guys can look them up. So all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of working around and I'm kind of building the form of the rock. Well, it all, the rock already has form, but the owl is going to start to appear. So, and a lot of times I'll leave a little bit of the rock show through or have a little of that rock even though it didn't have any ink work there i'll just use that and create like a little line a little separation i might go back later and do a little feathering and stuff there but it's just you can kind of draw a little bit by leaving letting some of that rock show through so again this is kind of watered down it's not watered down so much where it's all puddle uh and you could even go lighter, like I can just tap it where my brush is a little bit more dry and it's just tapping into the uh, puddle. And you can, I find you can get even more like thinner, a thinner layer, a little bit more precise with feathering a little bit. But again, you're going to build this feathering up. And it's important too, to start to think about like the form of the owl and the direction you want the feathers to go in. So I'm kind of radiating this out. And the, hopefully you guys can see it clear enough. Okay. I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, enjoying the weather. I mean, we've had some we have, we've had some crazy storms whip through here in PA, and we've also had, uh, we've had a lot of wind. But I'm enjoying all the flowers, and the trees are starting to bud, and... Okay. So, as you can see here, I'm just kind of building it in. Just, it's starting to get a little bit of a face. Now, this is just a basic wash. It's not any kind of detail. This is just kind of... But the owl's going to start to come alive each layer I add on. When I add the eyes, uh, that's when they really come alive. So This one, I, I decided to create like a sleepy, like a sleepy owl. So here's the breast of the, uh, of the bird. Like just the, so here's where you can do, uh, and again, you want to create like a little bit of shadowing also. I'm not going to go right into this area and put paint. I'm going to leave the gray of the rock, the grayish brown. So I'm going to just start down in here. And again, it's kind of watered down. And I usually do this a little bit more of washy because a lot of times I want the, the face to stand out a little bit. Now in here, I'm just going to, and this is neat because this has that really neat fold of the rock, that natural fold where there's that crack. And I love finding rocks, uh, you know, when I make these for people, a lot of people are, you know, some people ask, oh, could it be a, you know, nice clean rock? And then there's people who will ask for the, like a crack in it or a chip or something. And I, I think I kind of like it when it has like a little bit of it, something different where it's not perfectly smooth because it's, it just adds a little bit more character and it gives you the opportunity as an artist to just kind of see a little something else on the, like, Maybe a wing would be turned up a little bit or or some feathering might be blowing a little bit and uh, you just kind of work with the form. So 
So I'm going to leave that little crease in there. And this is just going to be like maybe another layer of, of feathering in the chin area. And again, I'll come back here. But right now, I'm just going to, I'm just kind of building, separating parts of the bird. Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear the chimes in the background. We have a lot of chimes in our yard. And it's, I love ambiance and all, but boy, when it's really windy, they, they can get pretty loud. It's calmed down a little bit, though, the wind. So, okay, so as you can see, it's starting to build up a little bit. Now I'm just going to kind of come around, and I have an area where it's going to be white back here. And that I usually kind of feather down because I, I know some of you may have, have an owl that I made. Uh, this is usually where I put the little heart. I put a little heart in my signature right there. Uh, and I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, questions if I sell them. And I do sell them. So they're on, they're on my Etsy site. Uh, but I do them. I used to make them and then sell them. But... Uh, I find it's a little, it works a little better where people can just order. I just kind of make them made to order and you can actually choose uh, your eye color or the, f the feathering color or if you want them to have glasses or a, a little bow or a ribbon. Uh, and I can do that too. So, but I want some of you to give it a go and see if you can create an owl. So, okay, so. This is just very simple, and it, there you go. And this, this was like, there's hardly any paint. So what I do is I just let that dry a little bit. Uh, it dries very quickly, and especially the more porous the rock, uh, it dries really quick. And this one's got, you know, it's a little porous. It's got a little, I, this is a really good rock because it's got a little bit, you can see those little pores in there. That's like the best rock. The really smooth ones that the paint like slides a little bit. And then the very uh the very porous ones that you really have to build them up. And here's a rock. I'll let this dry for a second. Here's a rock I found. This was kind of neat. Right? I was having a catch with my son today in the yard, and I found this rock, and this one's really neat because it's got it's got a smooth area, kind of where the face would be, and then it's really porous everywhere else. It's almost like it was created to be painted to an owl, so, uh, as an owl. So, uh, so this was kind of a neat little find. So, and I'm always collecting rocks, so I love rocks. Okay. Oh, that's the phone. Oh, hold on for a second. I'm just going to stop that. Okay, that's the first time that happened. It wasn't important, guys. So, just in case any of you were wondering. All right, so that's dry already. So, oops, sorry. Uh, so that's already dry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing the feathering and all. Now the feathering, there's different ways you can do this. You can build this and I'm going to kind of build this up a little transparently, but I'm going to start introducing, uh, some color, some brown and stuff in it. So this is where you want to decide kind of what, what color you want your owl to be. So, uh, sometimes I have, uh, rocks that are darker or gray, like this one's, this one's more round and gray, and uh, this one's a little bit more brown. So you can decide what you want to do. You can work with the color, or you can use that as a base and go more contrast against it. So, uh, but again, it's like a give and take. You you start layering, and then you start getting a more opaque. At least that's how I work, uh, and I think that's going to be a trick for you guys. Uh, 
I think in a lot of times somebody might just jump into a rock and start going opaque, start uh, laying the paint on too thick. And before you know it, the paint, the paint's all over the rock and it's hard to like, it's hard to like work the detail back into it. So what's really nice and especially with the gesso, you can water it down, you can build it up and it lays just enough where you can start layering. And you're really going to see when I come back here and get the highlights in here, you're really going to start to see the thing pop and get more opaque. But I'm in control of the detail because I'm working it up transparently. So here we go. Uh, let me see here. Now, my palette, I just have some different browns. I have my, this is probably going to be, be uh, the like the beet color. Uh, again, this is kind of laid out because I'll be doing more owls tonight. Uh, this is probably the, one of the eye. The eyes will probably be blue or green or whatever. Uh, but I'm probably going to mix a couple browns to get a color. So I just wanted to show you that. All right. And usually these owls will talk to me and tell me what color they want to be, but they're a little shy with this many people watching. Okay. So, I think I'm going to get a little bit of sepia in there, kind of like a sepia brown, a sienna. And again, I'm kind of watering it down. Now this, uh, just regular acrylics, they, they'll be, they won't hold the pigment as much as like that gesso was. Like, so when you water the gesso down, you can really spread it, but this you'll find there's like a limit to it. So you might have to get a little bit more opaque. And a lot of times I'll go back, I'll take a little gesso and mix it up. But again, when you mix white gesso with browns, a lot of times you, you, you won't get necessarily a light brown, you'll get more of a grayish brown. And that's kind of one of the things that happens with it. Unless it gets, if it's a warmer brown, it gets a little bit more light orange. So, okay, so here I go. So I'm gonna start, I just have like a little brown. And I'm going to just start, and I'm going to start on the inside, in the, the kind of where the feather would tuck behind the other feather. Okay. And again, right now, it's kind of watered down, so I would say this is transparent still. But I'm... By the way I'm doing this, I'm I'm controlling it a little bit more. I'm like I have more control of what I want to do with this owl. I'm not going too far with it. Uh, I'm also allowing the rock to show through because I think that's important when you rock do rock painting. Because a lot of times, if it gets too too much paint on it, it just really loses that quality of wow, that was a rock that you found, but it's just it's so loaded with paint. And again, it it. That's all well and good. A lot of people might like that. Uh, but I think one of the beauties too about rock painting is when you can kind of have the rock and kind of, it's kind of like that relationship you have with it. You know, it's like, you're not going to cover it completely and you're working with it. It's kind of honoring it a little bit instead of just totally covering it up. But everybody has different styles. So don't mind me. Uh, this is just kind of the way I do it. Uh, What I'm doing here, and as you can see, the again, the other thing with uh, acrylics, the lighter colors will dry darker, and the darker colors will dry lighter. That's one of the only things that's a little frustrating with acrylic. Uh, is And it's, I'm sure, for many of you, when you paint a room, you know, when you get the paint and you put it up or you do a little swatch and... And it's like, it's perfect. It's, it looks so good when you first put it on and then it dries and it's just off, you know, whether it dried too dark or too, uh, too light. Uh, that's one of the things that can, it's always frustrated me with acrylic. Uh, but the more you work with it, you kind of know. Uh, I think those who work, people who work with acrylic, they, they probably get, get the hang of it and what that color is going to look like before uh you know before it dries almost like a, uh, a musician would with with a sound they can hear the sound in their head before it ever comes out which is such a such a gift 
Okay, can you see? I hope you can see it. So as you can see, it's it's kind of the way it's drying. You know, this is drying a little bit darker. Uh, it's also a little watered down. So it's also the the rock is a little wet. So it's uh, that might lighten a little bit. You know, once this is dry, it might get a little lighter. Like this was the first one. See how that's a little bit lighter. Uh, but it's okay. This is feathering. And again, we're just kind of doing things in layers. Uh, these are just called, I just call them like for a first pass. Now, some of you might not have the patience to sit here and do this, but it's just, you know, every, everyone has a style, you know, but I find it kind of therapeutic, especially being able to talk to people. Usually it's just me here. So. Although it has, I have to say, it has been really special having my family home. Uh, you know, I've painted for years just being at home by myself or in a studio and, you know, be with the family when they get home from work and, and school. But it, I, I have to say it has been really a blessing to be able to be with uh, my wife and son during this time, so. I hope it's been good for you guys. I'm sure there's a lot of frustration and stuff out there too, but okay, so. And what happens is you start running out of room, but just bear with it. If it's still a little wet, you just put it down, you know, stretch your hands out or whatever. But, uh, but again, the thing with acrylic is that you can always, you can always paint over it. But again, it's about trying to have control while you're painting. Because the more on the first pass, the better detail that you do on the first pass as far as just kind of laying things in the where you want them. It just makes the whole the whole thing come together a little bit easier. Now here when I'm coming down, I'm going to get down to the primary feathers. And, oh, and the feathering is just kind of made up. I, I used to carve birds when I was young uh, and just carve them out of wood. Uh, I'll have to show you uh, some of those sometime. Uh, but before I ever painted, I used to carve carve birds. And so I studied birds. I had all the, I still do. I still have all the old Audubon books. And uh, so I've looked at feathering and all. And again, this isn't, I wouldn't say it's perfect. It's just, I kind of know where primary, secondary uh, feathering would be and stuff. So you just do enough to give it a, a look where it looks kind of real. But Again, it's your own creation and, you know, you put your little take on it. So, okay, I'm going to work over here. As you can see here, and what's nice about that, see, it's kind of, you get kind of a gradation because I'm just keeps dipping it in and sometimes you'll be able to leave some of that. But this is all going to, it's all going to pop when I put the shadow and the highlights on it. Okay. Okay, and we're a half hour in, so this is where I would be saying goodnight, but I'm not doing that tonight. But you guys, feel free. I mean, you don't have to stick around. I'm committed to see this thing through, so... Okay, so I'm coming around here. So for the primary feathers, there are the primary feathers are basically the bigger, the bigger feathers. And so I'm going to add a little bit more, I'm going to get a little darker. And I'm going to go a little bit more opaque because I know that these are going to be a little deeper, but I'm trying to stick it real right up against the line. And I'm trying to leave a little separation that's not painted rock. It's just going to be the rock color. That's where I'm going to go back with the a uh, highlight color and go right on that. So again, I'm kind of like, I'm putting a mark down for a shadow, but I'm also thinking about the light area and I'm leaving part of the rock as a guide for my next uh, pass. Okay, so I'm coming around here. And what's neat about the owls is you can, get, I mean, every one of them is just different. And, uh, Oh boy, I, I want to say I've done probably, I've got to be closing in on 500 owls I've painted. 
uh, through the years. I've done a lot of vows. I'm sure some of you have seen some of the, uh, some of you may even have them, the little moon rocks. I've done a lot of those too. Okay. So I'm going to go and do the other side. This is where now I have darker and thicker paint. So this is where I just kind of make sure uh, my, you know, I don't want to get mark up my bird, uh, you know, mark it up. I get the paint all over the uh, feathers and stuff. So I want to just be a little careful there. See how tricky this is? I got to like. actually not too tricky I don't want to discourage any of you from doing this I want you to go for it find that rock oh and there's all kinds of things you could do I'm sh there's there, you can paint there's some great rock painters out there that have painted uh, different animals and pets and it's just a lot of fun Okay, so now I'm going back, uh, I'm going back on an area I already painted. I'm going to just take some of this darker color and I'm just going to lightly, while everything's wet, lightly get a little bit of shadowing. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going in, I'm going to get a little darker. I'm going in and just redefining the shadow area a little bit. And some of the feathering. And this is, this is one of the parts that takes a little bit while, a little longer. Okay. As you can see there, where I have a little bit of, you know, little, it's getting a little deeper and a little darker in areas, and it's going to become a little bit more real looking each layer I do. So I'm just going to keep going, and it'd be great if I could see what you're writing and answer questions and paint, but that's, that would be impossible. So just bear with me. Have any of you picked up a hobby or uh, with this extra time that you have at home, have, it, have you picked up something that maybe you used to do or that you wanted to do and now you have a little time? Have, uh, it's always a good, a good opportunity to pick something new up or okay so we're coming down in here So the acrylics I use, uh, a lot of them, some are just regular, like Liquid X. Uh, so Liquid X is the same brand that I uh, that makes uh, the gesso. You can get that at Michaels or or I don't even know if AC Moore is open anymore, but I think it had closed or parts of it had closed. But or you can get them at different art things online. I don't even know if anything's open right now, but. I know you can get some art stuff online still, but that's the brand I, I use. 
You don't need anything real fancy for this. Okay, so so I kind of feathered that a little bit. And it's I would say it's just like one pass of like a light wash and uh and then it's got a little bit of shadow now i'll go back and deepen that up but i'm going to put this down and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back and i'm going to start laying in actually i'm going to do this little part this little ring around the head now sometimes you could leave that if it worked uh to match a color you could leave some of that for the stone but i think for this i'm going to because the highlight's going to be a little different color i'm going to brighten this this part or up and then I'm going to go back and then uh, do some feathering on the white, and you'll see how kind of some of that pop. So there I go. So what color am I going to do? Let's do like, uh, let's say like it maybe a cream, like a tan. And this I'll do a little bit. Are all of you catching up on the shows, like binge watching things? And that's another fun thing that you, we've been able to do a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. Okay, just checking. So this is just kind of like a, it's a really light brown and, I, uh, and a, a little of the gesso. So the gesso, because it has that gesso in, the gesso it's a little thicker so i can do more with this but again gesso doesn't work with every color especially like the browns it's a little tricky but this is a little this tan has it's it's a little bit more on the white side so i'm able to kind of play with that so i can go a little thicker it's going to lay on there really nice it'd be great if everything was in gesso but then i wouldn't appreciate it as much so the gesso works really great when you want to do like the beak or the, the blue eyes or bright colors, you know, the bright primary colors. So I'm just coming around here. And again, I'm trying to reserve some of the line. I don't want to lose the draw, you know, even though that's pen or Sharpie, I don't want to lose that because that's where it's still information I can use to show form. And again, if you can still have a little of that line in there, it's good. And sometimes I'll even go back at the end and use a little bit of Sharpie to pull out a little bit, a little bit of detail if something needs to be punched. So we'll see how far we get with this. I can maybe show you a little piece of that. Let me just kind of move along here. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit. So I'll go back and push the highlights. And the other thing, too, is uh, what's nice, too, with the owls, you can get little specks on them. You can put little dots on them, uh, markings and things like that. But that's all stuff that you do kind of near the end. Oh, you know what? I want to use that same color because it seems like it's a nice color. And I'm going to do the eyelids in that color. Now, you notice, too, I've been using one brush. And a lot of times, you might get away with doing the whole owl with one brush. I'll probably go back in with a tiny brush to pull out some of the detail. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little of this in. This will kind of, like, complement that. The marking around the head will kind of go with the eyelids a little bit. He's sleepy. Okay. And again, this is a... And you saw the line work on there was kind of just... It was simple line. But... Things become the more you paint and you reserve a little of the rock 
a little bit of a line, uh, it starts to get a little bit more three-dimensional as you work in it. And again, it's key. The key thing is building it up kind of a little transparently, not totally thick paint. And again, I think that's going to be a trick for you, uh, for those of you who want to give this a go, just to reserve those opaque, the opaque uh, painting, just save that for like the ending parts, the ending detail, just kind of build it up slowly. And again, it doesn't take too long, but uh, you'll find that you'll have better control if you can kind of build it up a little bit more transparent. Okay, so you can see he's getting just a little bit, a little personality there. Okay, he's still not talking though. Oh, we have this really neat woodpecker. It's not a pileated uh, woodpecker because he's a little too small. But he still has a red head, so like a red cap on him. So I'm not, not really sure, but boy, he makes a lot of noise. Uh, there's a dead old tree in a neighbor's yard and and... I didn't realize the the crazy chirping sounds that it makes too. It's pretty cool. So I got time on my hands. So these are the kind of things that I think about. Okay, so I'm going to go in now just with white, and I'm going to go back to our first. This is going to be the second pass on the face and the uh, the breast area and under the neck. Okay, so here we go, and. I'm going to leave a little of that lighter area because it can be like a gray. The gray right now looks gray because I laid it in washi. You can see it's got a little bit of grayness to it. I'm going to leave a little of that area because that'll create the shadow. So I'm, I'm going to reserve the highlights and go thicker on areas where I want it to be brighter. So here I go. I'm going to just keep, uh, use your paper towel. Uh, this is... A little bit more thicker paint so it's a little bit more opaque but use your paper towel to just kind of and just turn your brush to get when you pull it across the paper towel to get a little bit of, of a better point if you need to and if it's not strong a better a good enough point you can always go to a smaller brush so I'm gonna just kind of again think of the form when you're laying the marking in and again I'm not getting rid of that line yet the, the uh, pen line because eventually the pen line almost becomes just like a brush mark because it gets broken up as you're laying the paint in so so don't like necessarily just get rid of it get rid of it use it it can help create that three-dimensional form again these are all just little tricks that can help you you know it's kind of like reserving parts of the things that you already did instead of just keep covering them up and then like starting all over and you're like, Oh wait, isn't that where the nose was or wasn't the nose smaller or the beak smaller or bigger? Or... If you be, if you're careful with it, it can, it can really help you keep your form. So, but don't be too rigid. Have fun with it. Mess up. If you need to mess up, you learn from it, right? So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of shadow and it's just a little bit of the first layer. And I'm going to kind of leave that for now. So here I know I want this to be brighter. So I'm going to just go in here. And this is also where you can kind of clean up the eye area, like set the eye inside the, the feathers. Is where you can kind of clean things up a little bit. I hope you guys can't see me sticking my tongue out uh, while I'm painting. Uh, it's funny, my son, he does a lot of, he loves the draw and a lot of times he'll be sticking his tongue out and I didn't realize all these years I've been doing it. I, 
sometimes when you get kind of into your work, you don't even realize what you're doing. So sometimes I'll be sticking my, my tongue out. Oh, and sometimes when I'm drawing, I'll make faces. Like if I'm trying to like create something or a, a, a funny face on a tree or something sad, I'll, I'll kind of like mimic the feeling like just with my own, just with feel. I'm not looking at myself in a mirror. I'm just kind of getting the feel. And, and sometimes I, I kind of feel what I'm going to be drawing. So, so here I'm doing underneath the neck area a little bit. I'm just getting a little highlights in there. And I'm going to come down in here. Now this is, again, thicker paint. But I'm going to, and there's not a lot of water. So I'm kind of like just lightly tapping it. And I'm going to kind of feather that down. But I want to keep a little of that dark area, which again, the dark area, it's just from the first pass because I put all white in there. But it kind of turned gray because it was transparent. But see, now you're starting to see a little form. You know, you're starting to see a little bit of shadowing, you know, and the, the, the owl's coming alive a little bit. Again, this is just kind of a second pass. And I'll come up in here. Toning that down, it was a little bit of that brighter parts. But sometimes you leave the marks. Sometimes you leave them and they kind of look like it would be a little a little marking on the feathers. So, so I'm going to come right around to the back here. Okay. A little bit more paint. Again, direction. Use direction. This is just where there's a lot of fluffy feathers in the back. So just kind of feathering down and then just kind of tucking and then it tucks down and then these wings would protrude out a little bit. So I'll leave, I won't paint this white because I want that to be the shadow underneath the wing a little bit. Even though they're still kind of tucked close to the body. And you get so into it, and especially the more real you make it, you almost want to just like take the little wing and just like, ah, oh, just move them out a little bit so I can get in there. And But it's again, it's just kind of what you learn as, you, as you're going along. So, but the thing that you're holding in your hand that was just a rock, it's, it's turning into like it's turning into a little owl. So he has a personality already, you know, so he'll just need a name that, once I finish them, I'll post them and you guys will have to name them because you guys always come up with the best names. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, what do you think? Blue eyes? What do you think? I'm just going to put that out there and see if I, the first color that pops up, blue eyes, green eyes, on a comment and then I'll go with that while I'm letting this dry. Okay, I'll take a guess. I'm going to start mixing it. Oh, hazel. Blue. Blue's first. Okay, blue. I'm getting a lot of blues. Hazel's nice, too. Okay, so. So what I'm going to do is I'm mixing a little blue, but I'm going to mix the blue with the white, the gesso. So baby blue. So I'm going to do the lighter part of the uh of the eye not the highlight right now but this is something where you're going to see uh i'm going to put it in and it's going to look lighter when i first paint it on and then it's going to dry darker and that's one of those examples of lighter colors drying darker okay so i'm going to just and see this is the beauty about keeping things when you keep things like kind of earthy tones and toned down and then you go in with something bright like the eyes and then again that's what a lot of people like with the owls are the eyes it all of a sudden just starts to come alive and again it, this is nothing it's just i'm just laying paint here so 
Okay. Again, this is just kind of a first pass. You might go back. In fact, I'll almost for sure go back and brighten those up even more. But again, I'm leaving a little bit of the, the stone color, the rock, and the ink. And I'm leaving that. I don't want to just cover all that up and go right to the edge of like the eyelid. Because again, it's, it's like another color, another layer. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like another color, another layer. I really need a cameraman, don't I? Okay probably like banging into the tripod you guys are like what's that guy doing there so right now it's drying but you can see it's getting a little darker the blue it's just a little deeper so I'll probably go back in there and I'll do a little bit of highlight so okay so that's that so we got blue eyes I'm going to do the pupil part but it's going to be kind of the kind of in between so I'm using that same blue with no white Maybe a touch of the white and I'm going to introduce a little bit darker blue no black yet because the black I want to reserve for the final tiny tiny part of like the iris uh, of the eye and again owls they all look different but this is kind of I'm just kind of going along here okay so I'm going to just go in here and I'm going to put blue on the whole Fill this whole area in and again I'm not covering up that line where the eyelid is because again those those that brown is going to become an eyelash for the you know because my owls my owls have eyelashes it helps them smile more so I'm going in here kind of like a peacock blue Okay, so I'm going to just let that dry. As you can see, it's getting a little, it's coming alive. It's like, wow, right? It's just the rock. And now it's an owl, or it's almost an owl. So, so that's going to dry. Again, it doesn't take long for it to dry. Oh, and that paint's a little bit thicker because I, I, I know I'm not going to be doing too much with the eyes. So I'm going to go back and do another layer. Actually, you know what? Why don't I show the highlights? I'll start working on the highlights of the feathers. Okay. Now this is where I'm going to use a smaller brush. And you know what? Why don't we use the same tan that I used for the eyelids? And I don't know if I'm going to get this thing totally done because we're almost here for an hour. Because I, I do want to leave a, a few... Uh, a few minutes for questions. Okay, so I'm going in here. Maybe I'll just do a little portion of the feathers and then show you what I do also with the little punching out the, the shadow if I need to. So this isn't really thick paint. It's just a little light because again, I want to kind of gradate it into the shadow a little bit. I don't want it to pop so much because again, it, the more contrast something gets, it, sometimes it gets a little bit too too cartoony. I guess it's I guess it's more the linear stuff that you get. So you don't. It's okay to leave a little bit of, you know, something that's not totally painted in because sometimes it looks a little bit more natural. Again, allowing the rock to work with you. So I'm just coming in here. Obviously, you can see you need two hands to do this, unless you have something set up where you can put the owl up on like its own little tripod or a vice, but using two hands, it allows you kind of to move around. But as you can see, see, it's it's getting a little bit, a little bit of highlight. You can see how it's just starting to be, and that's without shadow still. So 
So I'll let that little part dry so then I can kind of show you with the shadow there. But okay, I'll go right back to the eyes and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, if you need to, I'm going to just take a little pen. This is like a little brown pen. And I'm just going to lightly lay my pupil in. Now, this isn't the highlight. This is just the pupil that's going to be black. It's just that extra sparkle. But, of course, it never comes alive until you get that little highlight in the eye. Then it has a soul all of a sudden. So, Okay, so I'm going to just take a little bit of black. And maybe not complete black. A lot of times I don't like to put something so stark where it's just black. So I'll use that darker blue and put just a little darker blue in with the black. Because you don't need it to be so dark. You don't want it to be like this, the, the pupils just standing out and staring at you. You want it to look more real. Okay. And when you get into the details, I'm like, I'm like caressing this bird. He's probably like thinking, let me go. Okay, so you can see the little little pupil on there. Put a little bit of color for the beak. Get a little orange with a little yellow ochre. Like I'm just kind of hinting color in a little bit. I'll go back and pick that apart a little, a little highlight. Usually when it's not, you know, when it dries, but I'll just go in right now and just kind of. So the other thing too, and I'll show you with this small brush. You can go in and go back to the white, the gesso, and thick, you know, thick, not watered down. Just get it to where your brush is a nice line to it, like a nice point to it, I'm sorry. So you can put a nice line down. And that's where you can go in there and you can kind of really pick it apart. You can get really small little feathers. A little bit more highlights. Like this is where you can feather it out a little bit. So, and why, might as well put the little pupils in there too. The uh, highlights in the eyes. Okay, so he's coming alive. So let me just show you one more thing. Now, I will take this thing and really go more into it, like really make it look more real. But you can see where I started. Look, I still have my little area where I can hold him, you know, with the thumb. It's a great rock, I think. Let me get it in the light there. So, uh, but this is where I would go back and start picking apart, putting mark making on it, like, you know, on the feathers and get the shadows. Now, the other thing I'll do, if you have to do it, you can go back. Now, I don't do it all the time. Go back with the Sharpie. And if you want to start to, if you really want those, like, just a little darker color, uh, a little darker shadow, you can go back in. And you can lay a little bit of that line in. And you want it to be thin. You don't want it to be real thick. But it's just that extra little pop and that little, you can see. It's just like enough where it just gives a little bit more depth. And usually a lot of times I'll go back and I'll just really kind of pick that apart with the pen. But it's real important when you're working with your pen not to get it too linear because then it just kind of, it'll start to flatten the form. It, it'll make it look more cartoony. Uh, if that's the look you want, then go for it. But you might, you just want it to blend, still keep it blending. So 
Uh, I'm going to stop here. I'll come around for like uh, five, ten minutes of questions you guys can ask, and then I'll I'll call it a night. So thanks for bearing with me, those who stayed. So, okay, let me come around. Let me zoom. Okay, so the zoom, it looked like the zoom worked. I hope it was clear enough. Okay, we don't want to be zoomed in on me. Okay. All right, so I'm back with paint on my hands. Okay, so. All right. So you have any questions for me? Oh, it's getting a little warm. Okay. So uh, ask any questions. I'll try to answer some. Uh, and then I'll post this video. And if there's any, you know, I'll try to answer some of the questions I see on the post. So, okay. So what do we got? Okay. What kind of brushes do I use? Uh, the, the Sabaline brushes are from uh, Robert Simmons. Uh, I use these also when I do the watercolors, uh, when I'm, especially when I'm working with the gesso. Uh, so I remember I told, told you that I work with rosemary brushes. Rosemary brushes also makes uh, great uh, synthetic uh, uh, brushes that you could also use. So uh, is he going to be for sale? Yes, he will be for sale. So uh, and again, if any of you guys want me to make you a rock, I have them. I, you can order them. I do them made to order. Uh, you can like you can order if you wanted the blue, blue, green eyes, feathering color, whatever. Uh, but it's uh, it's right in the Etsy Etsy shop, the Brownie Man's uh, shop. Uh, I'm sure many of you know of it. Uh, so you can check out there, and you could just I can create one for you. So, okay. Where do I buy the pens? Well, the Sharpies, uh, I get them, get them online, get them at Staples, get them at Costco. I love using the brown Sharpies, uh, but the Copic pens, uh, which are a little bit more lighter and they're kind of more, a little bit more uh, sepia in color, uh, I get those online. So, uh, and I'll write those down in the, uh, on the post, I'll, so you guys can look that stuff up. Oh, okay. Somebody's saying I need six. Okay, Mary, <laughs> contact me anytime. I can make them. Oh, and I make babies. I make. I, I posted one that I did. It was a tiny one, really small. Uh, this one, as you can see, this one that I just did, and here's a baby. So the baby's going to be really tiny. So, uh, okay. Oh. Okay, this is a good question. Eileen's asking what I spray at the end. So I don't spray. You can spray. Uh, I actually just use uh, Mod Podge. So Mod Podge. So uh, I like to just brush it on. I like to work with the matte finish versus the. I also have the 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 uh, gloss, but I kind of like the matte finish a little bit more. So because it's not as uh, it's not as shimmery. It looks a little bit more natural with the mat. Okay. Angie's saying that she's relaxed now. So fun and peaceful watching me paint. So thank you, Angie. That's, I don't know what I sound like. And I, if I'm, can make you relax, then that's a good thing, I guess. Right. Okay. What kind of paint did I use? So, uh, the paint again, it's, it's, mo it's all acrylic. And the, the brand is Liquid X. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. You use lighter layers than heavier ones on top. Yes. Yeah. So Anne Marie, so as I'm building it up, uh, when when I first put the first washes, they're very transparent. You can see the rock underneath, and that's important. I think it's important because you can control what you're gonna do and you can layer on top. Uh, as the as you build with color you get a little bit more opaque so but you can still keep some of the transparency and the rock showing through i think that's really neat when you can actually show a little bit of the rock you know you kept some of the natural part about it so uh so okay you use just one coat of mod podge yes mod podge yes one coat is all i use a nice thick coat. 
Uh, do I sell the rosemary brushes? No, I don't. Uh, you, they're from England, but I know the the store. Sometimes they do shows, and that nobody's doing shows right now, but trade shows and things. But you can order them. Just look up rosemary brushes, and they have a whole website, and they're great. They're you can just order right from them. Okay, so. Uh, can you use a black rock? Yeah, you can. I have used them. They're a little trickier because, again, the black, especially if you're working transparently, it, it's really hard to get things to really pop off of it. And uh, a lot of the black rocks, they're very... Uh, I find a lot of the ones I've worked with, they're very super s smooth. And sometimes they're a little bit too slippery. So I always go for something that's a little bit more brown or gray. Uh, did I only use white gesso or did I use acrylic white too? No, just white gesso. You do not need white acrylic. Just gesso, I'm telling you. If you have a bottle of gesso in your house, you know, I know everybody wants the wipes and everything and toilet paper, but if you have gesso, this is the secret ingredient for a lot of things, so... It won't save your life, but it can make some great paintings. So, I don't work for them, by the way. Okay, have you ever done an elephant head? No, not a no, but that would be kind of neat. So, my wife just did a little felted elephant. So, I'll have to share that with you sometime. Okay, so I'll answer like five more questions. Am I from England? No, I'm from just I'm from the U.S. Uh, just outside of Philadelphia, Phoenixville. Okay. Uh, okay. Any more questions? Uh, the gesso is kind of the base coat. The gesso is kind of uh, Kimberly's asking. It's it's kind of the first layer I do, but again, it's not on the whole part of the rock. I use it for like the highlights and areas that I know where the form's going to be lighter. That's where I'll lay the gesso in. Okay. Would I paint butterflies sometimes? I've painted some rocks with butterflies on them uh, for people. I've done a custom for people. Uh, it's a little hard taking a rock and making it look like a butterfly. I think the, night, the really neat thing about the owls with the rocks is you can kind of make it you know, there's a thing like such as painting on a rock, but I kind of think it's neat where you can actually make a rock look like an owl. Uh, not just paint it on it, but it actually becomes an owl. So, look, he's starting to look, uh, starting to come alive. So, uh, so I'll take a couple more questions. Uh, oh, yeah, Westchester, that's right near my neck of the woods. So, be safe. Okay. Can I see the owl rock again? Yep, Michelle, so here it is. And again, it's not done yet, but you can see. You saw what it looked like in the beginning. Uh, but boy, I can't get them out of my hand. It's just, it's so comfortable. So it's got a perfect little bend. And it even looks a little bit realistic, even where that little crease is. But So you work with it, work with the folds to make it look more real. So... Uh, so Mary's asking about Instagram. I'm, I was having trouble getting on Instagram, uh, live last week. I did not know what the problem was. I think right now, uh, and I'm going to have to kind of break the news over there. Uh, but I think I'm going to just stick with doing it here. Uh, because also I think, and there's a lot of you that follow me in both places and I don't want to be like a broken record. So, uh, for now, but I'll post videos over there. Maybe it'll just be a different kind of like, uh, I think what I'll do is I won't be live there because I it's almost impossible for me to see the things on uh, like answer questions and work. So this is nice because the post actually saves and 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 shows up on the on my on the Facebook, which is nice, and I can answer questions. But Instagram doesn't work that way. Okay, so uh, name and pine code. And that is a nice name because of the feathering, right? So. Hey, Roger, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, yeah, so he's like a worry stone. Remember those? Yes, yes. So, well, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, this was all, like an hour, almost an hour and 15 minutes. So 
Uh, thanks for bearing with me. I hope I didn't bore you at all. Uh, I hope maybe there's something that you learned or something that you can use. Um, no matter what, just have fun with it. Enjoy it. And uh, any questions you have, if anyone needs a rock, just look me up or contact me. Uh, they're right on that seat and I can do them for you. I've got time. Uh, so just uh, be well and God bless you and thank you for joining and uh, just be safe. Okay. Okay. Bye everyone.